Hello there and welcome to you talking to me. Today we focus on immigration and especially on the European current asylum seeker system. How do the member states react to illegal migrants coming to the European countries and how do they follow the application request? That's the debate we are going to focus on with my two guests, two members of the European Parliament, Eli Schlein. Hi. Hi, you are an Italian member of the Socials and Democrats group. Of course. And Jeroen Lenaas, you are a Dutch member of the Centre Wide group. Yes. Hello and welcome both of you. Thank you. Thank so, 600,000, more than a half million of illegal migrants, asylum seekers application were reached in the European Union last year. So according, that's according to the European Commission figures. Mm -hmm. So while Greece and Italy are complaining about all the asylum seekers coming to their countries, actually we can see that nearly 50% of the asylum requests are filled and shared between Germany, 35%, and Sweden, mainly 15%, and is followed by Italy, France and the United Kingdom. So is this showing, Mrs. Schlein, a failed European current asylum seeker system? Well, uh, I don't think so. I think that here we, uh, have in, uh, we, we confront with the most important challenge as a European Union, and uh, we have to really um, overcome the selfishness of the governments that usually tend to blame each other uh, on, the, on the cause of uh, uh, not being able to um, uh, impl implement uh, the Dublin system uh, very well. I think so we can remember, remind uh, our public what is the Dublin system. So of course, the Dublin system uh, is a system that tells you um, basically uh, which member state uh, has to uh, take on its shoulders uh, every single uh, request of uh, uh, international protection. But right, right now the system um, is, is uh, of course um, because it says that you have to present your request um, in the first country of the European Union where you enter. Uh, usually Usually they are the, the countries of the southern uh, of the of southern Europe because um, of course uh, they are in, uh, geographically uh, in, in the in the right position. Uh, of course, Germany. Uh, it's true that uh, a vast majority uh, of the the request uh, of uh, of asylum that came last year uh, came to Germany. But it's not. I think that this war between northern European countries and southern European countries is the mm, the wrongest. War Way to look at the problem. These people are fleeing from uh, uh, from uh, terror, from uh, wars, from discrimination, from torture, and they're not fleeing to Malta, to uh, to to Italy or to Greece. They're fleeing to Europe because, mm. of course, uh, we are. Uh, and, and and I think that if you look at the data, you see that only six member states are having on their shoulders seventy-five percent. Uh, seventy-five percent. Okay. That means where are the other twenty-two okay. member states? We show. I think we show uh, share responsibility. For real as the treaty say. Do you think uh, the same as Mrs. Schlein and do you think this is showing a lack of solidarity in Europe? Well I think first of all that with, with the Dublin system, uh, I think the Dublin system is a good system but it, it, it only, it was designed for normal circumstances and I think by any means we cannot say that what's happening in the Mediterranean at the moment is a normal circumstance so this means that we should also have uh, exceptional measures and it's very important that even though Dublin is in place that we find in a spirit of solidarity a much more even distribution of uh, refugees, of asylum seekers yes. over the European um, year because, because like I said, I mean, the, the 10 countries in Europe do 95% of the asylum requests. Uh, so this is, this is one thing and secondly this also means that within Dublin we need to have common indicators, common procedures. It cannot be that in Germany 90% of the Syrian refugees get recognition, while for instance in Malta they get less. It cannot be that in some countries you have to wait 18 months for your procedure to be finished, while in some countries you have, after six months you're done. I mean, this also is something we need common policy on this. Okay, and do, you th and do you think, I mean, Italy or Greece, for example, they should also take the responsibility to have this asylum seekers application also back and to 
to, to deal with that as well. Of, of course, uh, actually they are, they are both, uh, every country is struggling and, and Italy has also the problem of the Mediterranean uh, that is, has become, you know, uh, we were faster in having, uh, if you think about it, a common cemetery as Europeans, which is the Mediterranean Sea, rather than the real common asylum policy that we really need to tackle this, this, this problem. Um, uh, people are, are dying and as you know, uh, the, the Triton uh, mission is not enough. Clearly, uh, another uh, 300 people died in Lampedusa just a month ago. So mm. uh, we, we should, I, I agree with my colleague, uh, we are uh, under uh, not normal circumstances yeah. and we have to make uh, a real, have to a real European response to that. It couldn't be just Italy. Of course, we have to share better the responsibilities. I totally agree. The, the, the problem of the Dublin system is that um, it, it starts from the presumption that we have a common area of asylum policies across the, all the member states, but it's not like that. It's not like that because the same uh, request of asylum uh, gets a different response in different member states. It couldn't mm. be like that, and that's why it's so not working. We will have no. We have a reaction on our Facebook. So from Giorgio, who wrote that in Italy we pay for the other countries by controlling our officially common borders. Is it really fair for the south of Europe, Mr. Lenas? Well, I, I think. After we abolish the internal borders of the European Union, the external borders are a common concern. So, uh, no, it's not fair if member states should have to pay for this, but it's also not the case. Uh, Italy receives funding from the European Union to protect That's the border. It's in this budgetary period they get 520 million, and I think last week it was announced that they even get 14 million more. So, yes, it is a common concern, it is a common responsibility, and it's being paid for by common funding. So, mm. absolutely agree to that. Mm. So we will also now, uh, related to this issue of southern Mediterranean countries, we have a question from Sergio Nava, he's a Johannet Plus uh, member and he's from Radio 24. We listen to him. Good morning from Italy. According to the Italian Foreign Ministry, migratory flows to Italy have been booming in the early months of 2015 and Italy is ranking third for asylum applications after Germany and Sweden. As a journalist, I have heard pledges from the EU to help southern countries for more than a decade. Apart from the setting up of Frontex, which is quite understaffed and very much dependent on member states' contributions, not a lot has been done. Wouldn't it be more honest to scrap home affairs and immigration from the EU political domain, or do you honestly think that the upcoming EU agenda on migrations in May would mark a real shift? Thank you. Mrs. Stein, could you answer to Sergio? Yes, of course. I really hope so. I mean, we need a more holistic approach. In the Libe Committee, we're telling this uh, all the time to the Commissioner uh, Avramopoulos. But the real fact is what uh, Sergio just asked. Uh, it's about the self-initiatives that I was, I was mentioning before. The problem here is that member states are always too jealous in terms of, um, of uh, leaving the competence on these issues to a higher level to the European level that's why it's a trap because in Italy if you ask the, the, if you ask the people also Lampedusa they will say hey where's Europe here why do they do Europe uh, does Europe leave us alone but it's not true because of course Europe is also helping Italy with funding what is lacking is a real political will of member states let me just make you an example we had this mission Mare Nostrum which uh, was put under discussion because they would say uh, oh it's uh, incentivating people to leave their countries. It wasn't true. The data, as Sergio pointed out, the data shows that uh, this year uh, we have an increase in the number of people coming without Mare Nostrum, mm. which was ended. But Triton, who was supposed to be something after Mare Nostrum, it's not enough because the means are not the same, because it doesn't go uh, further than 30 miles from the coast of Italy, and it's not enough because people are dying before. And mm. so we have to make a real common mission, um, a, a, Europe, a Europe Nostrum, a, a Mare Nostrum, a Mare Nostrum a European version. Mm -hmm. But coming back, when there can, are... Can I respond? Yes, because you can uh, react, I think, yeah. uh, I completely agree that Triton is not an, an adequate answer to the problems in the Mediterranean. But I also think that even Why? a European... It is not. Because it is a, uh, it is a, a, a border patrol mission. Yes. Uh, Mare Nostrum was a rescue and search mission. But I also think that the European Mare Nostrum mission would not solve it because what we, we don't need... We do need saving lives and for that we need a search and rescue mission. Yes. But we need much more. Of if course. you see that at the moment refugees are being 
threatened at gunpoint to get into the boats, even in winter times with eight mm -hmm. meters high waves crossing the Mediterranean. If you see that human smugglers are claiming back boats from the Italian Coast Guard under the threat of uh, Kalashnikovs, then we need more than search and rescue. We need very strong military reaction to human smugglers in the Mediterranean. And we need to couple that with legal ways to get into the European Union. And one of my concerns is the best way to do it is to select refugees outside the European Union and offer them a protection within the European Union by resettlement programs. And still at this moment, there are 14 out of 28 member states of the European Union that don't even have resettlement programs. I mean, Italy is one of them. Um, this is a real problem. If we are serious about saving lives, we need to prevent them from crossing the Mediterranean. Mm. And that the only way that's possible, if we offer them places in Europe yeah. for those people that are entitled to protection. Mm. You know, but I, I agree. Yes, with, yes so we'll continue say, just, yeah, I, I because really, we have to end it. I, I, really, so. I really agree with my colleague on something. We have to anticipate our intervention. I mean, uh, saving uh, people uh, people's lives in the sea is, uh, you know, a, a, an immediate response. But in mm. the long term, we have to fight inequalities, which is the, the, the root cause of this migration flaws, and also anticipate the answer and prevent them to leave. But I think that humanitarian visas, for example, could be a better answer, because if we start start uh, analyzing an asylum request in those countries, uh, either we have the involvement of or, uh, organization, international organization like the um, UNHCR, uh, or it could be uh, um, against the non-refoulement principles, uh, you, uh, you understand yeah. what I mean? It's, it's difficult to have those countries deal with the request from asylum seekers. So I agree we have to anticipate, mm. but let's see how. So what, uh, what I want to come back so to another question from our German uh, member of UNED Plus from IMS Radio, we have a question from Ingo Moneta, who is related from the politic of refoulement, and okay. we were just talking about okay. this. Yes, we listen to him. In the first two months of 2015, about 10,000 people from Kosovo were entering Bulgaria. Most of them want to go to Germany, but they are considered economic refugees and sent back, although the Kosovo is not declared as a country of safe origin in all of the European Union. Are there any efforts of the EU to declare it as a country of safe origin, or is the EU trying to help the Kosovo in economic matters? So, Mr. Linas, you were talking about legal migrants. Make sure that le migrants are coming legally to the European yes. Union. But how could we prevent, as Mr. Mingo just told us, so how can we prevent refoulement in the European Union? Yeah, well, I think with the Kosovo issue, uh, it already changed quite a lot. I think now there are. Uh, if I'm not mistaken, instead of 1,400 people crossing the border, there are 14 on a daily basis. So the the the, the results of the problem are less. The problem there is, is, of course, the same. And I think he is completely right that we need to have a European approach to declare who, which countries are safe countries of origin and which countries are unsafe countries of origin. Because if you look at the procedures we have now, they're the same. We don't make a distinction. While the great majority of Syrian refugees is accepted in the European Union, the same goes for Eri Eritrean refugees. Yes. So if these are coming from such unsafe countries, from a war zone, war refugees, torture refugees, we should have easier uh, procedures for these people. And if we have easier procedures for those people, we can check out the stories of other people much more uh, carefully. So mm. I absolutely agree, we need a European policy on this. Thank you. Thank you both for coming. You're welcome. And thank, thank you for watching you. us. Bye.